mothers who are still living are going through and so on. Also, in another way, it's a memorial of mothers who have left us. So she was, my mother was totally com committed to the family. Oh, she great. was a mem member in the women organization of the parish, but she never went for any, any meeting there. She was just an, uh, a recorded member to pay the contribution. Uh, the, the, our family uh, was so widespread and her commitment there, that fulfilled her totally. The garden, the house, the cooking, the cleaning, that was her work. And I was the last born, so that was, um, yeah, I, I got a bit oh, of you were the baby. <laughs> you are now out of view, out of sight, Maximilia. You moved away. I only thought you were the first one. Let me just so let me let me let me fix a wire on my um Wi-Fi. Get ready, get ready. Morning, Veronica. Good morning, Father Herman. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Yes. Life goes, life goes on. Life goes on. <laughs> Saturday commitment. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father Herman, for helping me to understand how I should place my table. Now I didn't know. Now I know I should place it. The light should be before me. Into the into the face. Ah. The light into the face. Thank you so much, Father. Light into the face. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Maximilia, how are you, Maria? Long. I'm fine. <laughs> nice to see you. And happy to, to hear your presentation. <laughs> so I look through the window. I look into our garden. That is why oh. totally the, 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 uh, the window is ahead of me. Okay. And the, the rare part is my room. So that should be the constellation of our... This I'm just looking into the window and I have a bit of um, here a photo. Oh no, it's an, it's an, uh, uh, whatever it is, um, a created artistical thing of my parish church where I was serving and where I lived. It's now 120 years old. 
So, here. And here's another photo of mine from the time I had my first mass in my parish, in this, in this church, with the previous parish, uh, with, with, the, with the parish priest, Theodore, Theo. Here are some, some documents just ahead of me in my window. Many Francis, look into the window and you have light in your face. You look just dark. You are just uh, uh, the Giza Kabisa. Look into the window. Turn around. That's the opposite. We see your we see your window, but you should face the window. Sorry, I was fixing uh, my internet. It had gone off. <laughs> oh. You better start so that you are not getting into trouble. Uh -huh. Okay. Where is Steve? Yes. You will be introduced, Maximilia. You will be introduced. Now I see the right faces. Sorry? The starting point is on the way. Oh, I have been introduced? Yes, yes, you will be introduced. Okay, uh, so what will happen is... Sorry. Um, let me take this time to welcome everybody. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this beautiful day. Another opportunity, another grace that uh, God has given us to meet as a family. So I'd like to welcome you all. I'm Steven Kezamutima, uh, I'll be the moderator as usual from the Office of Justice, Peace and Integrity of Creation Franciscas Africa. Uh, we are also glad that our speaker of today, uh, Max Miria, is with us. And thank you all who have managed to join us on time. We're going to start. Uh, we've taken just a minute to wait for more participants. Uh, I would like to remind you that we have chat box as our speaker of today will be presenting. Uh, we can uh, keep this chat box active so that uh, we develop also uh, more ideas about the topic of today. Yeah, it's a wonderful opportunity. It is a nice topic to talk about mothers. And uh, as you know, uh, we love them, we treasure you. So today it's wonderful. We are happy to hear from you. And uh, I would like also to remind you that when the presenter will be speaking, it's good that we all mute our microphones in order to avoid any uh, background noise. So Karibuni uh, Sana, I would like to invite Sister uh, before I invite Sister Mary, uh, Veronica, would you like to give us a, an opening prayer? And then Sister Mary will come in, invite, introduce officially our guest of today. Then we take it from there. Karibu San. Thank you very much, Steve. Let us pray. Kwa jina la baba, na la mwana, na roho mtakatifu. Amina. Baba yetu uliye binguni, jina lako litukuzwe, ufalme wako ufike, 
utakala nifanyike duniani kama binguni utupeleo utupeleo mkate wetu wa kila siku utusamehe makosa yetu kama tunavyosamehe na sisi walio tukosea tusitie katika kushawishi lakini tuokoe maovuni amina salam maria umejaa neema bwana yunawe bwana yunawe umebarikiwa wewe kuliko wanawake wote na Yesu mzao wa tubu rako amebarikiwa Maria mtakatifu mama wa Mungu utuombe sisi wakosefu sasa na saa ya kufa kwetu amina atukuzwe baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu kama mwanzo na sasa na siku zote na milele na milele amina Father in the name of Jesus we come to you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts we praise you and we glorify you for bringing us here we thank you for CCFMC we thank you for Justice and Peace uh, Africa office we thank you for the Franciscan Family Association we thank you for our presenter Magnira we are praying that Lord you are going to do with her as she presents to us We are pray for other Franciscans, other Yufra who may be on the way wanting to join us, that you may be able to hasten uh, their steps. Today, as we remember mothers and women, Lord, we want to remember all women and all mothers of the world, that they may be good examples to their children and to their families and to the nation. This we pray trusting the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Amen. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, sister. Okay. Yes. I want to take this opportunity. I take it as a privilege to introduce Mats Mila Munishwa. She's a long time friend of mine and my sister. Yes. Uh, what I know about <laughs> what I know about Maxi, I call her Maxi. Uh, what I know about her, she's in the media. She has, she's a media uh, person. She's a very good communicator. Uh, she's a very qualified uh, media person. And uh, in the issues of the church, Max Miller is always on the first in the front line. To, to bring ethics and uh, make sure that uh, even the communication that goes out there, it does not hurt the church. The second one I know about Maxi is that she's very committed as a mother. She's a mother and she's very, very much committed. And uh, I call her a, a, a miraculous mother. There was a time that Max Mira was very sick and my, my, mira, um, uh, miracles happened. And uh, he got to her, and that's why we are here. Uh, we are happy to have her to share with us. So as a mother, as a Franciscan, she's a lover of St. Clair. And being a Franciscan, she's always ready whenever she's called upon. To tell you the truth, Maximira was called one day ago, and she accepted to be with us. So thank you. You are most welcome, Maxi. I know that as a mother, you have a lot of experiences you go, you share with us. And uh, in that, maybe religious who are here may say they are not mothers, but we are all mothers. For me, I have mothered so many spiritually. So we hope that uh, we are able to, to get something uh, and uh, tap your experience, tap your knowledge, and uh, also tap your commitment. You are most welcome, Maxi. Uh, unmute your microphone. Unmute yourself. He has, thank you very much. I have. Thank you very much, Sister Mary Francis. You have um, put me uh, where I don't belong. She has exaggerated many things. <laughs> about me. But one thing is that I am a professional mother. 
So you'll allow me for a short while, you're not going to see my face as I give my presentation. Would that be okay? Okay. I was asked to talk about the role of a modern mother in the world today. I do not pretend that I speak for all mothers. Mm. I can only say that I speak from an experiential journey, a very personal one. Today, this presentation is not an academic discourse, but I'll be walking along uh, the journey of um, remembrance, looking at the milestones that I have made as a mother so that you can also share with me. I want to thank Veronica for by praying uh, with us. Uh, but I also just want to say a short prayer if viewers and listeners will allow me specifically from a mother's heart to the hearts of those that she has mothered. Dear God, you're our father and our great provider. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and are glad in it. Heavenly Father, for every day that flows forth from your good nature, like a spring from the earth, we rejoice and we are glad in it. And we ask that you may make this day, and especially this session on motherhood, no different. God of enduring faithfulness, through the good and the bad times, strengthen the special bonds between mothers and their children, nurture their relationships, build their friendships, and make your love the core of their relationships. Give them faith in the journey ahead and help them to work together joyously. We pray through the intercession of our blessed Virgin Mary, who is the mother to us all, and of our dear Saint Clair, who's a special mother to the Franciscans. Amen. Um, friends, given that this presentation is in commemoration of a very important day that will be celebrated tomorrow, let me begin by treating us to a little memory. The story behind this day is one of firm determination of a daughter who resolved to pay tribute to her mother and by extension to all other mothers of the world. Over one century ago, an American woman spent her life mobilizing mothers to care for their children by improving sanitary conditions to combat the appalling infant and child mortality rates. At the time, many children were dying due to diseases that ravaged the community. And this mother campaigned so hard to have the work of other mothers recognized. Christian and an active Methodist ex ex Episcopalian, his mother hoped and prayed that someday someone would found a day to honor mothers for the matchless services that they render to humanity in every field of life. Sadly, the lady died before her dream could see the day of light. But the flame that she had lit did not die. Her daughter who was named after her, determined to realizing her mother's vision and inherited the campaign. You may know that the young lady's name was Anna Maria Jarvis. Her legendary mother was Anne Rives Jarvis. It is Anna Maria Jarvis who suggested that a day honoring mothers be observed nationally every year. 
And so friends, you see, Anna Maria founded Mother's Day to honor her mother. Her story and the story of modern day Mother's Day began with her own mother. And my story also begins with my own mother. Though Anna Maria never had any children, she is recognized as the mother of Mother's Day. The title that defines her remarkable, ceaseless devotion to her mother and motherhood in general. Now, while this is not a spiritual holiday that Christians observe, it is nonetheless a good day on which we can recollect and pay tribute to all mothers and mothers in spirit, like Sister Mary Frances and motherhood. I speak, as I said earlier, as a mother who has learned the joys and perils of motherhood. Foremost, from my African mother, and later from the experiences of other African mothers. I have seen along the way that motherhood is a school from mothers, children learn lessons that will never be offered in any other institution. Lessons of being, love, courage, lessons of resolve and gratitude, honesty, respect and hope, sharing, spiritual matters, and scores more. You will agree with me that it really doesn't take much to stir up a little bit of content. When that happens, we are left prone to complaining all the time. And sometimes we pick little inessential fights now and then. And who is it that brings peace? It is the mother. It is also the mother that teaches us to be patient, to persevere, and gives us what we need to learn in order to cope the such circumstances. Mothers teach us how to disagree in an amicable manner. They teach us how to focus on what is good and what is positive. And they teach us about how to make friends and how to keep friendships. D. Jakes, in his book, Mother Made the Difference, provides several roles that mothers generally perform to shape the life of a child to become a contributing member of society. It's a beautiful book. It's very informative. If you find time, please take it out and read it. Like many women of years past, my mother Kevina did not have any formal education, yet she played a very crucial role in my being. It is she who gave me life and taught me how to love. It is from her that I learned how to be who I am today and how to be a mother mother of 12 children. She inculcated in me the respect for people. And she instilled in me the love for God. Friends, just as motherhood was the most important institution during my mother's time, it still is the most important institution today. It does not matter that we have all the trimmings of modernity. It does not matter that we have opposing voices from radical feminists. This is still the most important institution. And in a short while, we are going to see why and how. If there is anyone who has an uncountable responsibilities for which she's never remunerated, it's the mother. She handles many dealings in a household as well as outside the homestead. And therefore, she has many varied roles to carry at different times. Yet she's always ready 
never complaining. And there's always a smile on her face. Now let's see why motherhood is the most important institution. Mothers begin life. And beginning life is the most important of all responsibilities. As I like telling people, God made mothers, then he made mothers. I will repeat, God made mothers, then he made mothers. God trusts mothers so much that he entrusted the souls of little beings into their care. As mothers are the first indications of sovereignty of God in our lives. When the mother chooses to go through the process of old fashioned bathing or the modern day Caesar, that does not change the fashion. That does not change the fact that be she modern or old fashioned, a mother always begets a life and shelters a baby in her womb up to the point of delivery. Then she has the responsibility to raise the child. And in Africa, Oftentimes, raising a child happens under very difficult conditions. You know, there's a joke that says that when a child deviates from the norm, nim toto wa mama. But when the child excels, nim toto wa baba. And so mothers carry all the beatings. When things do not work out right, we are judged because much is expected of them and they are judged harshly and differently. I have learned that. Mothers are also influencers. The pivotal role of being a mother is still the divine mission assigned to women and women alone. The adage, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, illustrates the influence that mothers have over their children and by extension on society. I'll give you an example, a personal example. At a Bible previous presentation, Endo, my daughter, forgot her Bible verses. I was seated right in front. Tuck, she looked at me and she was so hopeful that I would go I would uh, go to her aid. I tried giving her cues using my lips, but my prompts left her memory blank. And so what I did is I leaned a little forward and I whispered the prompt to her ear. I am the light of the world. And you know what? Right away, my daughter beamed with joy and with such pride and a feeling of greatness, she said in a very loud voice, my mother is the light of the world. That's who we are to children. Because whereas Jesus is the true light of the world, mothers are the light that leads their children to God. Teach the children to believe in God and to pray. And from the example that I have shared about Tendo, my little one, at that time, she reminded me of the very important role that my own mother, Tevina, played in bringing me to God. Mothers are not only the light of the world, they are also the light of the home. In the book of Proverbs, we read, Forsake not the law of your mother. For the commandment is a lamb, and the law a light. In the light, a mother constantly guides her children, helping them to make the right choices in life. By some miracle, I must admit that I did day on the straight and narrow because of my mother's constant guidance. Although we live in totally, two totally different uh, generations. Besides giving cues at such odd moments, mothers are always ready to answer impromptu 
two questions, some of which may be, be um, misconstrued to be ba bad manners for the, those who are not initiated. For example, they may ask, why am I different from my brother? That's a girl asking, why? Because she has seen the anatomy We have problem with the transmission of her brother is totally different from from her own and she seeks answers those who have three or four doctorates may not be in a position to answer them off the cuff only a mother endowed with god's wisdom wisdom is able to deal with such questions and so the question is how was anna maria Ruiz inspired she had heard her own mother pray at the end of a lesson on mothers of the Bible. This is the prayer. We hope that someone sometime will find a memorial, Mother's Day, to commem commemorate all mothers for the matchless services that they render to humanity in every field of life. And Anna never God, her mother's prayer. Now you may be asking, how has modernity, our contemporary times and technology affected motherhood and mothering? Again, from experience, this is what I did use. But in addition to more widespread access to education and a broad acceptance, of working women, more and more of them, especially in Africa, are choosing to take up employment outside the home, as well as being mothers. I went through that myself. I held a full-time job, yet all the while motherhood was my first job. I prided in calling myself a professional mother and I had to balance between the paid work and motherhood, besides being a wife. What with such a large Catholic family? I worked at home in the evenings, cooked dinners. My mother work also entailed budgeting, running errands both for the family and later as the children grew and went to school for them as well. I sat on school committees. In the evenings, many times I had to chauffeur stranded children home at the beacon of my children. And I had to cook during school get togethers. At home, I also assisted with homework. I nursed those who were sick. I fed reluctant eaters and I cajoled nibblers. I was a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, a teacher, a cook all in one and at the same time. I was a judge many times. When my brood of children disagreed, and they disagreed quite often and had their own little fights. And I must admit that the responsibility of trying to raise healthy, happy, and well-adjusted children oftentimes overwhelmed me. This was heightened with societal expectations. Yet somehow, and I do not know how, I always found coping mechanisms. I have since learned that mothers are timeless teachers in the school of hard knocks and in the classroom of life. I have learned too that we bear a divine role, not only in the lives of our children, but also in society and in the world. Since I had to quickly learn on the job to be both prosecutor and judge in one, with a line of unending complaints, my children have along the way, and while amassing anecdotes and wisdom, learned that when it comes from me, the 
phrase be good and don't be silly both mean one and the same thing. That was my line of teaching the value of virtue. That can only happen in Africa. In Europe and in America, you can only say be good. But if you use the term don't be silly, you would actually be dragged caught by your own children using inappropriate language. I thank God for making me an African mother. Sometimes when anger set in after a provocation from my children, I would teach them genetics and I would shout at them, you are just like your father. Other times when I could not figure answers, I had my own unique logic, those persistent whites. And the, the logic was, because I said so, that is why. Now, when little kids are little, you have little problems. How and why it happens, I may not answer, but all I know is that there are all manner of quote unquote crime committed in families right from childhood years. Sometimes there may be witnesses to those crimes, but oftentimes there may only be suspects and plenty of them are dead. So you can imagine my husband died leaving me a very young widow with 12 children. So wherever there was a little crime committed, I had 12 suspects, all looking at me with very innocent faces. But like all good criminals, children learn the fine points of law at very tender ages. For example, my culprits would lick sugar and swear on their chest, I swear, ma'am, I didn't do it, it wasn't me. And yet, they were guilty as charged because there were telltale signs dotted on their chubby cheeks. They had dropped off the sugar, but they didn't rub well enough. Now, as the children have grown up, so have their challenges, their accompanying challenges also become bigger. Teenagers have come with their whole share of headaches. It has not been easy for me. And there are moments that I have asked God my 40 questions and kept on replacing them after each one is answered. Yet I have struggled in my own way in finding my own unique way of mothering my children. And the key has been in trusting in God to guide me in my thoughts and in my actions. You need to know that there is no one size fits all mantra. Indeed, there are many problems that are associated with our time. A lot more is demanded of us mothers today than was the case when I was growing up. But for us to understand these difficulties and challenges, we must first understand the greater complexities. For example, media, especially new media, and technology, churning up so much information that it is difficult to keep the pace with what is going on around us. Pornographic sites abound, and they are unbridled, meaning that they can be accessed at any time, even by children. Pedophile predators also lurk in those sites, targeting innocent children, teenagers and even young adults. When our children were younger, Stephen, who is my late husband and I, had, we did not have a television. We chose purposely not to have one, so that we could have quality family time. We told stories, we sang, we danced, we laughed, we read. As they grew bigger, the demand to have television also 
came up. We had to discuss about the limits to are going to set on viewing programs. There were certain programs that were a no goes on. And those limitations had to be followed by everyone, whether we the parents were at home or not. Now my children are in their adult lives. I'm having to cope with having to um, tell stories about what happened to my grandchildren. And I can only pray that my children kept the values that they learned from me at home. Values that I, I inculcated in them when they were growing up as boy children and as girl children. Values that they learned from me when I had sleepless nights, when they threw tantrums, when they were back talking, when they were defiant. Values on how I dealt with issues of raging hormones in their teenage years and hypersensitivity, and many others. Yes, there are frustrations. And indeed, frustrations have had their fair day. But ultimately, joy and gratitude to God has had the way. You need to know that each child has his or her unique challenges. And I have had to deal with them just as uniquely. In my dictionary, a phrase give up does not exist. It does not exist at all. It has never been a vocabulary in my life. When I have fallen down, I have woken up and asked God to breathe on me. Every time when I have asked God to breathe on me, he always has. And so I join other women in praying in gratitude for all our mothers and all the women out there who desire to be mothers, and as well as those others who are mothering spiritual children, and who have joined in the wonder of bringing forth new life. Friends, it is not a coincidence. The day that we honor all mothers falls in May, the month of Mary. And as we seek her intervention, let us join the angels today in praying once again the Hail Mary at the end of our presentation. I want to say happy mothers, day to all mothers, happy mothers day to all mothers to be, and happy mothers day to all those mothers who are mothers at our heart also want to say happy Mother's Day to the men and women who have made mothers free, and especially to those who have made me a mother. I wouldn't have been if they were not in my life. We have only 15 minutes, and as I had shared earlier, before the program began, this has been a very personal and passionate sharing on motherhood. It would also be good if we had your stories, even if it's just for a minute or two, about the effect that your own mother had on your life. Because that is how stories are told. And we need to tell your stories. We need to hear your stories and not just my story. I would love to begin with Father Harman. I know that your mother is in heaven, but you have a story to share, Father Harman. Can no. Father Harman unmute? Yeah, it's unmuted. Uh, I'm uh, addressed already. 
I think someone else has to say a few words of thanks to your elaborations, willingness. Uh, it was really a short time that you came in and stepped in. Uh, we were a bit of shortage. It is uh, a time for lecturing and the professors are also busy and the students. So uh, Maximilia, great, great words of thanks that you made yourself available, even uh, producing even a written paper there from your point of view and your life experience. Um, uh, I remember that among your children was even one disabled and we buried him. I was present, I think, at least in the mass, not in the funeral. So, and uh, there was a bit of Franciscan presence also with you, with you and your participation in Franciscan courses, going to Portsuncula, quite, quite, thank you, that we are models. And you once revealed to myself, since I have touched this Franciscan charism, I'm just a new person. I have just a new vision for my life. I have just, an, 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 an almost a new creation. This is what I would like to correct yeah. you a bit. What uh, that makes us really, um, uh, it's an affirmation for our doing, for our approaches that people can get deeper meaning through us. So my person, my personality, uh, it was all the time said, oh, look, the, the son of the mother is just a, a copy of her face. Yeah, of mother's face in myself. So I have no idea about. So, um, yeah. And my mother knew how to dress me. I was the last born clear. And whenever I, yeah, um, I can say um, my parents never rejected any of my uh, requests, what I wanted. I have also to say that I contributed for my part to the family, uh, to the uh, demands we had an own house. There is water system, there's electrical systems, there is a garden. I put, when my friends came and said, let us go to the movie. Now I said, I go to the garden. So uh, priorities. This was established through the model of life of father and mother. I can only say that was my mother married in demands a widow with seven children. Then you know what happened to her She in an age of 35 or 36 years of age. And then she had on her own two children. So that is a situation of life where I was also, I was put in. I had nothing. My sister was a bit more struggling. Why are we such a big family? Why I'm the young one with the older together? So it was, um, yeah, I had no problem with it. Uh, my mother was on the way to become a religious, but the circumstance at home in the farm, and so the parents didn't give her the permission to go there. And when the other request came from a cousin of hers who died in this married situation, leaving a family with seven children behind, she stepped in and they got married. And it was just after some month of uh, starting of uh, Second World War. But my father was secured in, uh, in work in the mines, in the industrial area. So it was, we were quite secured. We were quite secured. Many more things for myself or I give up to others. Welcome. Wow. Then there's quite a bit that we have in common with your mother. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maximilia, for, Maximilia, for this great experience that you've shared. I think your presentation is was special comparing to the previous ones that we've had. You know, we are used to see on the screen, the PowerPoint, whatever, scientific things. But this one, speaking from your hearts and the giving realities, true stories, yeah, it's really built as, now I'm speaking on behalf maybe of boy child of young or young people, because in whatever you've shared, you're talking about mothers and the children, mothers and the children. So mothers and the children are not separated. So thank you uh, really for sharing about this uh, special uh, duties, the joy, responsibilities, willingness of mother, uh, compassion, love, 
care and everything. Sometimes we, we, we even forget fathers, just we said all good things come <laughs> from mothers. And uh, one thing that maybe I, I can also say is that mothers, they always have solutions to issues or problems. Whenever you hijack a mother, whenever a problem in the house, mothers always have a solution. A man can go uh, out to struggle to get solution, but a man always has, a, a, no, no, a mother has that solution. I remember uh, uh, when the issues of COVID-19 started, uh, when that, uh, that, um, that information was trending of a woman from costs who cook the stones to just to lie to children that there is a hope they're gonna eat until they did not eat. So those strategies, those solutions that shows like a mother can give hope until the last minute, there is nothing but the hope will remain there. Um, it uh, connects immediately to uh, my mom also, uh, I have a, a such strong mother in a situation of, of a genocide. And uh, okay, where I come from, the, we experienced that when uh, my mother, uh, when my dad was killed and the mother, we are up and down. We are in the IDP's life. There's nothing to cook. So that is where I realized with the, um, with the same, uh, the same flour of cassava, she, she's able to make ugari and make also sauce from the same, the same flour of cassava, some skills that nobody can think that exists. You will still eat the same things, but she makes it in various meals using one item. Today. People could wonder like, what, what, how now these mothers are creative, whatever. So oh, the solutions is very important to the situation nowadays in the world. So children should learn this from mothers. Let's me also say uh, happy Mother's Day. May we be there, may we raise them, may, may we really protect our mothers, may we, clap for them, may we love them, they give them care that they deserve. You really deserve this. So um, mine is to appreciate so much and they give this uh, stage also for others who have something to say. I know Veronica also completed on something. Uh, from the side of Patricia and there's some novices there, I also would love to hear from mothers and the ladies Please, uh, today it's a wonderful to hear from you. Welcome. Thank you, Steve. Maybe let me take it up. Uh, I, I want to say, uh, Max Media, you have shared your experiences, and this is very important for all of us because experiences are more than we can read from the books. And so, your generosity of sharing your experiences, and at this moment, when you are telling us that now you are thinking about your grandchildren, uh, I think that is something that all of us uh, are proud of. Then Father Harman also, he has shared his life. I have known something about him, I didn't know. <laughs> Thank you very much, Father, for being so real and generous. Also, Steve, telling us about your family. I think that uh, what, what I'm gathering from all this sharing is that our parents, our mothers and our fathers, they had certain values. And one of the values that I am picking, because I can also identify with it, is the is faith. You know, the men and women of God that they they were anchored of on some faith. You know, they had faith in God, they had faith in children, they had faith in the family. And like today, when we are beginning to see uh, our young people, not all of them, but some of our young people, they really don't have faith in the family. They don't have faith in children. They don't have faith in one another. And so I think this topic is very timely. I have also picked the issue of love, that mothers are loving, women are loving, parents are loving. You know, there is an issue of hard work. 
accepting people in the family the way they are uh i think what i have also carried out is the issue of support in the family uh parents and the mothers specifically uh, they are known to, to be supportive so i think maximilia all of us have carried something uh and also thank you for saying that even those who are not biological mothers they are mothering other people they are fathering other people so it is like all of us are in this together so all of us are mothers all of us are fathers all of us are parents because we are also taking care of other people so thank you very much for this great talk Veronica, and thank you, Kizamutima. Mm -hmm. So now the floor is open. Uh, welcome also, uh, welcome our participants to share ideas. They also, you can use chat box to appreciate the presentation of Maximilia. Steve, can I add something? A request yes. now that you're talking about mothers. In, in the Franciscan uh, family, we also have young people who are called Euphra. I'm sure Maximilia, you, are, you know you know about the Franciscan youth, Euphra. And now I think this is the right time for us to say we now want to mother all youth within our reach oh, we great. want to become mothers and fathers of the franciscan youth so i want to take this opportunity to ask everybody who is listening to this seminar today please follow me come be a mother to you in kariobangi you in Beni Rokomboni, you in bungoma you in nakuru you in mombasa ebumeru narobi kwea we have groups everywhere. St. Francis, Rimuru, they are waiting for us. We have a group coming up in uh, Mweki Parish. Kaidre, everybody who is in this forum, come. Let us mother these young people. Because some of them, they, 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 they don't even have parents. And those who have parents, some of the parents have lost the direction. So it is us Franciscans, because these children have come to us. Come, help me. I am the animator, but I cannot do this work alone. I am asking all Franciscans to come and help us mother these young people. Maximira Karibusana and others. Asante. You will need to let people know when, how, and so on, right? Yeah, I would, I would personally love to be part of the Mogizi. To <laughs> be part of the Mogizi. And um, to those who maybe may be confused about my title, I am Maximilia Muninzwa. And I just prefer being called Maximilia Muninzwa. But if you must give me a title, if you must give me a title, then please give me the very traditional title of Mrs. M-R-S, not M-S. I have my reasons for that. <laughs> okay, Maximila, thank you very much for the session. You have taught us a lot about our mothers. We have been, you have been telling us we needed to treasure our mothers because where we are right now, we are in because of our mothers. So we, I personally, I say thank you very much as we remember our mothers and even our fathers because they did a great job. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you are not Patricia. Patricia has just hidden herself outside. I'd love to know your name. Just a visitor. I'm Emily. You're not just a visitor. You're Emily. <laughs> thank you, Emily. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, for me, I just want to say thank you for the session. 
And it is good to appreciate our mothers and even fathers, it is good to appreciate them because all of them come together to make us whom you are today. And for us, you can see we are Postland and the one who is our formator, she's also our mother. She gets us for us everything. So it is good to appreciate everyone. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You haven't told us your name. Okay. You know Patricia. I am Lucy at the end of Postland, Franciscan Missionary Sister ah, for Africa. And uh, ah, Veronica, Veronica, I know that group of Euphra, the one in ah. the I was also a member there. <laughs> you are at Yeno. Yeah, I am Lucy at the end of. Lucy, I think I have seen that name in our register. Lucy at yeah, it was once, but now I'm in formation in uh, Nakuru, Franciscan Missionary Sisters for Africa. Very good. Uh -huh. You see now, Euphra, Euphra, these are the products of Euphra. I'm very it's happy true. to hear we yeah. know that deal yeah. in Kariobangi. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Which year was that? It was uh, last year. Yes. 20 okay. I joined it when I was in uh, secondary, 2018. Exactly. Oh. I have seen that name. I, I, at Tieno, now I can see your face and I remember I saw you in the meetings, fraternity meetings and formation classes there in Kariobangi. Thank you. Thank you very much. My commentary okay. to this is we just celebrate this year, 21, 10 years of Euphra in Kariobangi. And I was yeah. at the starting point in 11 with Teresa and with, I don't know, with others and with the Capuchin father, and the uh, parish was so open to receive these first young boys and girls making their promise. I was present, and I was again pre uh, present this year, uh, the yeah. Sunday before Palm Sunday, when in the new parish of Daniel Kombonui, some more made their prof um, promise. And I appreciate this development and the words of Veronica, I can only support. Let us work for it. We remember Thank our you. brother Florence in Subukia Nakuru did a lot for new groups. And I was helping since 25 years almost in uh, Uganda, especially since Margaret, to lift, build up uh, Yufra groups. We have more than 1,200 registered Franciscan youth in, in Uganda. So Kenya is now competing with Uganda. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for your support. Oh, you've done great work, Father. I was I was in Baga not so long ago, at the beginning of this year. And when I told them I am a lay Franciscan, they were so excited and they said, When you meet Father Harman, tell him. I met a priest and he said, When you meet Father Harman, tell him that he's the one who made me who I am today. So you've done great work. <laughs> Habari ya mwalimu James. I'm fine, Max. <laughs> Everybody, good to meet you. I'm sorry I missed your session, but I can imagine how good it was. I'm going to watch from YouTube because I, I was caught up somewhere else. But thank you for being there for us. And oh, for this us. will be on YouTube. Yes, it will be on YouTube, so I'm going to Anytime. follow and hear what Anytime you say. Available. <laughs> so thank you, Father Haman. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, I can see the fruits of your youthful now. They are joining religious. Thank you, Atieno. This year, I was also teaching two youthful in uh, Sapia, two youngsters in Sapia oh. who are just graduating with a certificate in Franciscan studies. Uh, that is wow. Mark and who? Who is the other lady, uh, Veronica? He's called Joy from yeah. Los Bukia. Joy yeah. and Mark. They were wonderful. Wonderful, yes. wonderful people. So yes. uh, I think the way uh, Veronica is saying, we need to support her. And uh, at least uh, getting those two people come to us was very good. I hope you are going to get some others. They also join us. You know, we spend a year with them and we also help them, prepare them. Uh, Max Maria is among uh, the pioneers of our Sapia group. 
and she yeah. started with certificates, diplomas, she even did bachelor's, and we are very proud of her. That is why she's able to be here with us, talking about motherhood, but in a Franciscan uh, notion, in a Franciscan setting, in a Franciscan way, because our way is unique. It is not just uh, being a mother, but a unique mother being a Franciscan. So we are Amen. very grateful, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, anybody else would like to share something? Is this Sister Ruth around? I'm, I'm Sister Patricia, Franciscan yeah. missionary. Sister for Africa in Nakuru, eh? uh, Maximilian, yeah, Maria, is it? Yeah, Maria, I'm very, we're really sorry yes. we missed your, actually we missed your talk, we put it on at the last minute. I just happened to look at my phone and I saw the 7th of May. And then I quickly get, got in touch to ask, is, was this, year, is it yesterday or today? And they said today, so immediately I put it on. So I know we missed a lot of your, your very interesting talk on motherhood. But I want to thank you very, very much for what we did receive. And our postulants were very happy with what they received, but it was very little. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, they, they can, they can watch it on uh, YouTube. All right. I'm Sister Patricia, Francisca <laughs> Missionary Sister for Africa. I'm wow. from Ireland. <laughs> oh. oh. Best country, <laughs> good country. And, yes, I know. I've been there. I know it's a beautiful country. Uh, yes. uh, I my my parents had thirteen children. One mother, one father. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Irish family. Anyone who has less than that is not Irish. <laughs> And of course, there were many struggles growing up, but the most important thing was the love we received from our parents. So that ruled out, that was very good because we had so much, so many struggles, so much poverty in our family, but through it all, it was the love that counted. Um, and that's where we are today. We received all of this love and care and support from our parents. So now I'm um, trying to give this love, care, support <laughs> to our posture. Wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still spreading that love. Thank you. As well as giving it to, I'm also running our program, Love and Talk Center, Integrated HIV AIDS Program in Nakuru. So I'm trying to give oh, okay. love, care, and support to all. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Patricia. I hope one of these days we'll meet. Please, God. Yeah. In person. Great. Okay, for those who, are, who joined late, uh, we've shared the, the, the YouTube link in the chat box. So you can pick the link from there. And then uh, you are able to watch this whole, uh, this presentation. When you have time, you can share it also with your friends. This is uh, also another way uh, for us to spread our good news. Uh, uh, since we are few here, but we are able to impact others to share what we are talk, presenting here, because you know people uh, need to learn or need to know what this I think it is a yeah it is a privilege for us to be here. So you just select this link, you copy it, then you can put it uh, some way so that when we we leave the Zoom, you can remain with the link also. Or, it is easy, you can also write JPICFA uh, with capital letter. It will take you to our YouTube channel. You can find even all previous talk and uh, videos recorded of all Saturday Zooms and the other events that we always hold. So now, uh, if nobody else have something to share. Uh, I've seen that Pamela and Shor is around. Pamela, can you hear me? 
Yes, Steve, I can hear you. Romero, you get me something to say about mothers today is a special also. For you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Steve. I, I really appreciate what uh, Mrs. Max someone has asked. Yes, she's uh, really shown us that uh, despite of everything, mother's love is what makes us uh, uh, still survive. I mean, despite of the hardship we may go through, poverty, at breaks, uh, mother's love still uh, keeps glues us together. So I celebrate every mother. I'm a mother of two, a 13 year old son and an eight year old girl. So I celebrate every mother. And you don't have to have given birth to be a mother. Your heart needs to be, to be a, I mean, if you're born a, a, lady, a woman, you're in the, you, you have the, the mother wound in you. So you don't have to have children to be a mother. Uh, Sister Mary and other sisters have been mothers in different ways. We've learned from them. We've uh, gained courage through what, uh, listening to them, also through their experience, through their mothers. So thank you, thank you for this beautiful message. Uh, I love, I love you all, all the mothers and even the men, because without you we couldn't be mothers. Thank you. Be blessed. Thank you so much, thank Pamela. You. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you. We have another lady, elderly. She calls herself, I re read the name there, just Mama. Uh, can we listen to our um, lady tertiary there? She's a great lady. Welcome. What is her name? Mm -hmm. so, somebody she called is really Mama. Winnie Kabora. She's the one Winnie. calling herself Mama. It is yeah. Mama. Winnie, Winnie Kabora. Show yeah. yourself, Mama. <laughs> show yourself. <laughs> we have passed the very same. Uh, she was sick, and I followed her later on with the corona. Yeah, so. But she made it, I made it. Uh, good. Um, maybe. She might have some technical ah, problems. Yeah, she's saying her microphone oh, is not microphone working. Is not working. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ole. So, uh, uh, ole, ole. Ole. probably I would say something about um, Winnie Wakabora, and I know she's reasoning. Uh, Winnie Wakabora was also our student uh, who is finishing her certificate again in uh, uh, Fra Franciscan spirituality. Uh, we were very happy to have her in class, and I think she posed a very big challenge to the young Franciscans, both in the religious life and the rate. And I can tell you, she she's a very big support to the Franciscanism. She's a very big support to the Christian fraternity. And I think I can say, while she's hearing, that to be to God that she can't speak now that she's a wonderful mama, a wonderful Franciscan, someone who needs to be emulated. So Winnie Wakamura, wow. we are very proud of you. We are very happy to have personally. I thank God for meeting you. I thank God for teaching you. And I thank God for even supervising you because you are a wonderful Franciscan. And uh, I wish next year we can have another Franciscan like you who actually Winnie Wakabora reminded me Maximilian Munizwa when I was teaching them. So actually Winnie is that mama that we can't forget and we are proud to have her. So I'm speaking now as her teacher. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for an encouragement. Time is going. Thank nice you. Again. By the I, way, I, I we have just about, I that. We have celebrated Mother's I, Day or celebrated it tomorrow, but in three weeks to come, we have Father's Day. Maybe we get another proper talk on fathers. On fathers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. True. So uh, let's, let's me request uh, Max Miria to give us a, a closing uh, remarks. Uh, 
after people have commented, uh, reacted on uh, your presentation, just say something a little to close your remarks. Then Father Haman will give us a blessing. When it has been said, you do not say, because then, as our people say, Italitia Tembo Maji. However, I just want to thank you all for finding time to uh, listen to me. And as I said, for those who have just come, my presentation was not academic. It was purely experiential from myself and uh, from mothers also who have shared similar experiences in their journey of motherhood. And I'm hoping that we will be able to keep this um, conversation running, even if it is outside of this um, domain. And the reason is there's a lot of radicality out there that is pushing motherhood, the desires to push motherhood outside of the face of the earth. And so if you and I do not work together to actually let the world know the important role that mothers play, then tomorrow we may not have a story to talk about mothers at all. It is not lost on you, it's not lost on us. Today we have men who would rather call themselves mothers. The truth is no amount of surgery is able to turn a man into a woman and vice versa. We have to stand up for what is right because what is right is what is godly. And what is godly also is motherly because God is both mother and father. That's something. Great. Thank you. Adhaman. Yes, um, it's really true. Um, in the in continue to, to uh, the explanation of Maxi, uh, women have their dignity. Women have their experience, uh, their ex yeah, their their um, uh, appearance and their appearance of beauty, in their faces, attractions, in their whole body appearance. So let us appreciate this in our own mothers who were with their own life, with their whole being inside and the center of the family. And uh, whoever would like to manipulate this, uh, we, we would damage God's creation. We would damage each individual appearance of women or of men. If we do not appreciate one another in beauty, in appearance, in dignity, so the, we have to work on it. And Franciscans, in the footsteps of Francis and Claire, are models of this togetherness in harmony, togetherness in mutual support, togetherness in mutual uh, understanding and matching and ca taking care for one another. Claire took care for Francis, Francis took care for Claire. So we have a model for uh, Fratelli Tutti is uh, already rooted, oriented, originated in this event of Cl Francis and Claire. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless us. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Brothers, sisters, friends, postulants, we continue to work together and we find new themes and new attractions for our weekly togetherness, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. All the best. Bye. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Nice weekend. Bye bye. Next bye -bye. Saturday is already the Saturday before Pentecost. <laughs> yeah, our young ladies there. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. Lucy Atiano is the group. Enjoy life. Franciscan <laughs> day. Yeah. We have them. No? Yeah. yeah. Together. <laughs> Follow my stupid footsteps, and you will only experience a heap. And, 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 and a huge, large amount of uh, togetherness, of uh, yeah. fulfillment, of happiness and joy in your personal heart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs>
I close you. Stay well wherever you are. We meet again another Saturday. Thank yes. you. Thank you.